Hi. In this video, I would like to review the concept of improper integrals on unbounded intervals and show a couple of examples of how to compute such integrals. Recall that we originally defined the concept of the definite integral for functions defined on a certain closed interval, a, b, included in their domain. And if our function is positive, like the one we see here, then the definite integral will compute the area of the region bounded by the graph of the function and the x-axis from x equals a to x equals b. Now, in some cases, we may need to compute areas of regions that look like that. This region is bounded by a graph of a function and the x-axis on an interval that goes from a to infinity. To compute such areas, we make the following definition. Integral from a to infinity, f of x dx, equals to the limit as z goes to infinity, integral from a to z, f of x dx. The integral from a to infinity is called an improper integral. And to compute it, we first compute the integral from a to z, and then take the limit as z goes to infinity. The idea behind this definition is simple. For a fixed z, the integral from a to z is an ordinary definite integral. z is an arbitrary number greater than a. The improper integral from a to infinity is obtained by making z larger and larger and approach infinity. Let's have a look at our first example. Find the value of the integral from 4 to infinity, 8x minus 12 over x cubed dx. Although a graph is not needed for solving this problem, seeing a diagram is often helpful. Here's the graph of the function y equals 8x minus 12 over x cubed. In this problem, we're going to find the area of the region bounded by the graph of this function and the x-axis on the interval that goes from 4 to infinity. We will start by computing the definite integral obtained by replacing the upper bound infinity with a z. So we first compute the integral from 4 to z, 8x minus 12 over x cubed dx. Let's rewrite our function as 8x over x cubed minus 12 over x cubed, and further simplify to get 8x to the negative 2 minus 12x to the negative 3. Using basic integration formulas, we can integrate now and get 8 times x to the negative 1 over negative 1 minus 12 times x to the negative 2 over negative 2. The bounds are 4 and z. Let's simplify the expression in the brackets and get negative 8 over x plus 6 over x squared and the bounds are still 4 and z. Let's substitute the bounds, 4 and z, and take the difference. We get negative 8 over z plus 6 over z squared minus negative 8 over 4 plus 6 over 4 squared. This can be simplified, and we get negative 8 over z plus 6 over z squared plus 13 over 8. So we have shown that the integral from 4 to z of 8x minus 12 over x cubed dx is equal to negative 8 over z plus 6 over z squared plus 13 over 8. To find the improper integral, we will now need to take the limit of this expression as z goes to infinity. Let's replace the integral from 4 to z by the expression we have just computed. What we need to find now is the limit as z goes to infinity of negative 8 over z plus 6 over z squared 
plus 13 over 8. The limit of the first term, negative 8 over z, as z goes to infinity, is 0. The limit of 6 over z squared, as z goes to infinity, is also 0. And the last term is a number, so it will just stay as 13 over 8. The value of the limit is therefore 13 over 8, or 1.625. Our conclusion is that the integral from 4 to infinity, 8x minus 12, over x cubed dx, is equal to 1.625. And that's the answer to the given problem. Before continuing to our next example, I would like to emphasize a few important points. And here's the first one. Improper integrals are defined as limits. And we know that when we compute the limit of a function, we can get a number, but we may also get infinity, positive or negative, or even a limit that does not exist at all. When we compute an improper integral, if we end up with a number, we will say that the improper integral converges. If we end up with either positive infinity, negative infinity, or a limit that does not exist at all, we will say that the improper integral diverges. So remember, improper integrals can converge or diverge. My second remark is that a similar definition can be given for improper integrals on an interval of the form negative infinity to b. Those improper integrals can be used to find the area of a region bounded by a graph of a function and the x-axis on an interval of the form negative infinity to b. The definition that will be used is integral from negative infinity to b f of x dx equals to the limit as z goes to negative infinity integral from z to b f of x dx. And finally, I would like to remind you that integrals measure signed area, or area with sign. This means that a region above the x-axis will contribute a positive number to the value of the integral. Regions below the x-axis will contribute a negative number to the value of the integral. The same thing will be true for improper integrals. They will measure the signed area of the region bounded by the graph of the function and the x-axis on the appropriate interval. Let's have a look at our second example. Does the integral from negative infinity to negative 1 e to the x minus 2 over x dx converge. If it does, find its value. As with our first example, we will start by replacing the infinite bound, negative infinity in this case, with a z. So we first compute the integral from z to negative 1, e to the x minus 2 over x dx. This integral will be equal to e to the x minus 2 times ln absolute value of x. The bounds are z and negative 1. Let's substitute the bounds and compute the difference. We get e to the negative 1 minus 0 minus e to the z minus 2 ln absolute value of z. This can be simplified and we get e to the negative 1 minus e to the z plus 2 times ln absolute value of z. To find the improper integral, we have to take the limit of this expression as z goes to negative infinity. So the integral from negative infinity to negative 1 e to the x minus 2 over x dx will be equal to the limit as z goes to negative infinity of e to the negative 1 minus e to the z plus 2 times ln absolute value of z. The first term, e to the negative 1, 
is a number. So the limit of e to the negative 1 is also going to be e to the negative 1. The limit of e to the z as z goes to negative infinity is 0. And the limit of the last term, 2 times ln absolute value of z, as z goes to negative infinity, is positive infinity. So this limit has the form e to the negative 1 minus 0 plus infinity, and therefore the value of the limit is positive infinity. We see that in this case, the value of the given improper integral is not a number. Our conclusion is therefore that the improper integral from negative infinity to negative 1 e to dx minus 2 over x dx diverges. To summarize, improper integrals on unbounded intervals are defined as limits. To compute them, first replace the infinite bound by a z, compute the integral, and then take the limit as z goes to positive or negative infinity. We're going to show you now some problems you can use to practice this material. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.